It was a deadlift day at the gym, and I was at the end of my training for an upcoming powerlifting meet. I had four plates on the bar, and it was my last warm-up set, and I remember feeling off and mentally unfocused. So sure enough, on that last rep, I felt a sharp pain in my lower back as I put down the bar. My back instantly seized up, and I could barely stand straight without intense pain. After a rough week of pain and limited mobility, I was back in the gym training. The following month, I competed in a powerlifting event, lifting three times my body weight and setting a provincial record. Now, if you look at my form, you'd probably think, well, it was just a matter of time before that injury happened. Look how flex my back is. Sometimes I would get comments from other lifters in the gym about how I should be careful about my lifting technique. Yet I've been lifting for over 15 years and that's the only time I've ever hurt my back. So the common advice is to keep your lower back extended in a lordotic position or at least in the neutral zone when lifting to avoid hurting yourself. But what exactly is a neutral zone? The way they measure this in the lab is they'll place two sensors, one at the lower thoracic spine at T12 and the other one on your sacrum at S1. Zero degrees of flexion is when you're standing upright. Full lumbar spine flexion, which is about 55 to 60 degrees in most people, is measured in a full forward bend. From a research perspective, the neutral zone is found by passively moving a cadaver spine and measuring the forces through flexion and extension. The data is then plotted on a low displacement curve with the spinal load on the y-axis and the amount of movement or displacement on the x-axis. The region of the low displacement curve where there's minimal restraint from the passive structures of the spine, such as the bone or ligaments, is considered the neutral zone. Any deviations outside of this neutral zone will stress those passive structures of the spine. The theory is that the stress on these structures can damage them and lead to injury, such as a disc herniation. There are different types of disc herniations. This typically occurs with the spine in a flex position, where the inner nucleus increases in pressure while the posterior fibers of the annulus are stretched and strained, leading to a disc bulge. In lab studies with cadaver spines, it took only 35 degrees of flexion during repetitive bending with a low load to cause a disc herniation. So from a clinical perspective, it would be logical to stay within that neutral zone to avoid damaging the passive structures of the spine. To do that, you'd find the midpoint between full spine flexion and full extension. Instead of defining neutral spine as a single position, you can think of it as a range. So the neutral zone may encompass that midpoint between you know, the 18 to 35% of your full spine flexion. However, when they measure the motion at the spine for many common gym lifts, we see that it's not actually possible to stay within the neutral zone. For example, a study of a group of 17 lifters, including weightlifters, powerlifters, and CrossFit athletes, showed that when using their normal technique, they deadlift with about 60 to 90% of their max lumbar flexion, and between 45 and 85% of their max flexion during the squat. If you look at someone performing a deadlift, it's sometimes difficult to tell if the majority of the flexion is occurring at the upper or the lower back. Most of the correction of the back position might occur at the upper back, at least visually. But we do know that you can modify your lower back flexion angle to some degree. So even if the stress on the structures in the spine may be increased with the flex lifting posture, it's unavoidable and it's questionable if it really does increase your injury risk. With a recent meta-analysis showing that flexion at the lumbar spine during lifting tasks was not a risk factor for low back pain. However, there are still many questions that need to be answered about the link between spinal postures, lifting, and low back pain. If these cadaver studies show that repetitive lifting can lead to damage, then why don't weightlifters who perform thousands of these repetitions each year not have higher rates of disc herniations and back pain? So one problem with those cadaver studies is that they fail to take into account the body's amazing ability to adapt, to get stronger and more resilient over time. Some people even train this motion purposely, performing flexion exercises such as a Jefferson curl to improve the spine's ability to adapt. When lifting heavy weight, as long as you avoid the extremes of lumbar flexion where the spine is less resistant to stress and you give your body time to adapt and recover, then you should be safe. What's interesting is that from a performance perspective, if you watch strongman competitions or elite powerlifters during a deadlift, they tend to maintain a rounded back posture. The late Konstantin Konstantinov was known for this unorthodox deadlift style. 
I remember an interview with him where he stated that he had improved his max deadlift after switching to this rounded back position. And there's even research to support this, with one study showing that your strongest at about 75% of your max spinal flexion. The big muscles in your back, the spinal extensors, are in a more mechanically advantageous position. And there's something called the lumbodorsal fascia that contributes more passive stability to the spine in this flex posture. So by flexing more from the spine, you also decrease the distance needed to move the bar. So what are the main takeaways? Consider these four tips. So first, it's still important to learn the lift that you're performing, even if it's more from a performance perspective. The better you are at the technical aspects of the lift, the better awareness you'll have to control the movement and position of your spine. And as long as you're avoiding lifting with that fully flexed spine, your injury risk shouldn't be higher. Number two, under heavy loads, maintaining the position you're in throughout the movement is a good strategy. The inner material of the disc, which is the nucleus, it actually migrates further when repetitively flexing or extending your lumbar spine compared to just flexing it. While a movement will still occur in the spine, for example, you'll see a lot of lifters in a squat have a butt wink at the bottom. Conscious effort to control this will help whether you lift in a neutral posture or a flex posture. Number three, don't be concerned if you've had a disc herniation in the past. There's evidence to suggest that many disc bulges spontaneously reduce over time. And even if it hasn't, they are poorly correlated to low back pain. In fact, many healthy asymptomatic people have disc bulges on their MRI. And lastly, the most important thing to remember is that your body will adapt. If you gradually and progressively increase the load on your body, it will get stronger and more resistant to injury. So don't be afraid to stress different areas of your back by training in a variety of spinal positions. When I think about the episode at the gym where I injured my back, my body was not prepared to lift the load. I had a mediocre warm up, and I didn't feel mentally in tune with my body that day, even though I had lifted similar weights and more in the past. Instead of pushing through, I should have listened to my body, stopped and moved on to a different exercise.